you for joining me here today and I love an excuse to design something really wild and creative and try things that I've never done before so when I got a wedding invitation through that said steampunk attire optional you best believe that that was not optional for me so I decided to challenge myself and make my own so what you're going to see today in this video is me making a very very ruffled skirt some 18th century riding bloomers uh, adding a lot of decorations onto a pre-existing corset and making a cropped jacket. So if that sounds like something that you would like, stick around and let's get on with it. I already owned the corset from a stag do I went on a few years ago, but to make it more steampunk in style, I thought I'd add a few bits on. So I got a few lengths of chain from my local haberdashers and with some offcuts of material, I laser cut some gears which I laid out on top of the corset and decided to hand stitch on. So at this point I have now spent at least a few hours hand stitching all of these in, but to be honest I really am not loving the effect. But then I had the idea of tearing up strips the fabric that I'm going to use for my skirt and pinning that down on top of where the piping is and I'm already liking this a lot more so what I'm thinking is that I keep on with the gears but instead I'm going to sew these down on top I might try running it under the sewing machine but if not I will be hand stitching it so after many frustrated hours of hand stitching all of these stripes on with some embroidery thread so you can see the effect here uh, I chose to do it in a chunky thread just because I like the aesthetic and also the corset wouldn't go under my sewing machine but I really like the way it turned out and I'm glad I changed my idea from the gears. Now to measure the skirt part I made sure the corset was on because that wouldn't be my natural waist measurement so I measured what my waist would be with the corset on and then measured how long I wanted the skirt to be and essentially I just used these measurements to cut out a big rectangle which I then started pinning to the corset and of course I got distracted so I wanted to have kind of like a sloping skirt at the front like it wasn't full the whole way around so I gathered it around the waist just so I could see like how the skirt fell and when I was happy with the positioning I just took out the skirt with a pair of scissors do I recommend doing this yourself? only if you're brave or stupid like I am. When I got a shape that I was happy with, I took the skirt off, laid it out so it was symmetrical on the floor and just trimmed it so it was the same on both sides. So I got this kind of shape. At this point, I realized I didn't really like the gathers so I took all of them out, caught up in the skirt and spent the next three years putting pleats in, uh, away from the waist, all the way around, doing one at each side at a time to make sure that it was equal on both sides. This was a very time consuming process but I just loved the way it was looking. And because I love doing all that folding I decided to add some lace all the way around the edge of the skirt which also took me a few years and gravity was definitely working against me here because it was still on my mannequin. Um, I'd like to say it's because I wanted to see how the ruffles would fall, but really I just didn't realise I could take the skirt off the mannequin because I'm kind of dumb. But there we go, this is a process of me adding all the pleats and folds. And once I'd done that, I top stitched all the pleats on the sewing machine, now realising I could take it off the mannequin. And around all of the folds I added some ribbon that matched the ribbon that I used to tie my corset up at the back and just did a dig zigzag stitch to stitch it all together and that was a really quick way of doing it rather than doing all the seams and folding and this is what it looked like after it was done. I wanted to see how the skirt would fit underneath the bloomers. Uh, I found this pattern online. I will put the link down in the description if you'd like to make them yourself. There were instructions with it, but I didn't get them. So I just kind of did my own thing and they all came together in the end somehow. So it's pretty easy to do. This is what they look like after they've been done. And this is what it looks like with the skirt on top. 
So I'm really digging how it's looking and time to move on to the jacket. To make the jacket I just simply kind of cut around a top that I made a few years ago. Did it on the fold so that when I opened it up it would be the same. I then realised that that is not how you do sleeve. So I rectified my mistake and kept on going. So this is the back panel. I used that as a template to cut out two pieces for the front of the jacket. And then I just extended that sleeve hole a little bit just to make it more comfortable to move around. So these are the pieces. Sewed them at the shoulders and the sides so I could get a fit. It fit quite well, but I wanted it to be a lot more cropped. So just kind of eyed it and trimmed it after that. And because I'm not a monster, I used a pattern for the sleeve. Uh, this was going to be cropped. I was also going to add a sleeve cuff. This is me ironing it now. Folding it into the middle, then folding it in half so that when I sewed my sleeve together, that would fit inside that. So I sewed the sleeve at the little section, which would bring it together, and then did some gathering stitches all the way around because I wanted it to have a poofy, ruffly effect, just like everything else in this costume. So pulling on one side of that string to create my gathers, I then shortened it so that it would fit inside the sleeve cuff. After I did that, I pinned it in place and just sewed it down on the sewing machine. After that was done, I attached it to my sleeve hole in my shirt so far, making sure that the seams matched up. Then at the top to create the poofiness, I added, you guessed it, lots and lots and lots of pleats. So this is what it looks like when it's all been pinned and a quick whiz round on the sewing machine attached that to my shirt. This is what it looked like after it was done and I was really happy with it. The sleeves are so poofy and exactly how I wanted them. It fit really well, but I still did feel it was lacking a little something. I thought maybe trying on the goggles for the costume would help. I got these off Amazon. I will put the link in the description again. And I'm really liking how it's looking, but this jacket was still a little plain. So I did some lace all the way around it. Loads and loads of pleats again and added some red lace on top just to give it a little bit of a pop of colour and to hide any stitches that I did to attach it to the jacket. I wanted to create a bustle at the back to give a bit of volume and so I just layered three materials that I had. So some of the skirt material, this gorgeous satin and just some black velvet to tie in with the black of the corset. And I did just a really loose running stitch at the top so that I could gather those to form the bustle effect. Here it is after it's been gathered. For the waistband, I cut my waist circumference by about three inches, folded it in half, folded the edges in just like I did with the arm cuff. And that was going to be hand sewn to the skirt. I quickly made a face mask because some of the ceremony was going to be indoors and face masks were still mandatory. I got these really cute little studs from my local haberdashery. Or a few pens each so I thought I'd add them to give a bit more of a like steampunk kind of factory effect and I really liked how it looked I think they worked really well with the goggles and I was getting really excited at this point because I just thought I looked really cute fast forward a few days it is now the morning of the wedding I am in my hotel room hand stitching everything together so at this point the waistband had been added I'd added a few of the gear decorations from the corset to the skirt and was now just hand stitching the closures and the ruffles in place because there was no way I was going to get them under the sewing machine with all those layers thanks to all those ruffles which is exactly what you want to be doing the morning of the wedding is panic sewing in a hotel room Luckily, I managed to get it done, which was really good, seeing as how my fiancé was an usher and it'd be a bit embarrassing if I turned up looking like trash. Here it is, as I was getting ready. Are you even going to the wedding if you don't have a photo shoot in your travel lodge? In my experience, no. So here we are, there's the under things, here's where it is all together, look at my face, now I've put effort in with my makeup. And here is a little fashion shoot.
really hope you enjoyed watching me make this outfit today. I definitely had a lot of fun making it. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them and I always respond. But thank you for watching till the end today. I post lots of creative content, so if you liked what you saw, stick around and I will see you next time. Bye.